Hi, I'm at Northeast Comic Con, and I'm with Mara Kristen. That's right. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's awesome to meet you. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. So, how many seasons did Lost in Space have? We filmed 83 shows, but three seasons, which now would probably be about five. Okay. Yeah, you know, so... Yeah, we worked really hard, and we loved it. Yeah, it was like yeah, it's a lot of fun. Oh yes, we what, had a lot of fun. What episodes were sort of your favorite in the show? Do you have any favorites? Well, I, of course, I my favorites are when I had a lot to do, uh, yeah. Yeah. which wasn't very often, but I was like always there. Um, uh, I I really enjoyed the zookeeper. I, I liked the first year of many of them, and I, I loved the vegetable rebellion. The Great Vegetable Rebellion. I love talking to carrots. And, and Jonathan, and Mark says he loved talking to celery. So, I mean, you know, come on. What more could you want? It's healthy. It's healthy, yes. Yes, and we're vegetarians, so there you go. Oh, no, they wouldn't like that, would they? <laughs> so what were you doing after the show? Well, after the show, I became a parent. And I raised my daughter, I love... Uh, of course, uh, Laura, and um, I did many, many, many commercials, uh, TV commercials for a variety. I was the Tab girl. Remember Tab? Oh, yeah. I think they still sell it once in a while somewhere yeah. in this world. But, uh, uh, oh, I just, I did Dunkin' Donuts. I did, I mean, I did all kinds of commercials. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was that was great because I could spend time with my daughter, and um, a lot of time, and still be making money. So, what more could you want? Money's always good. Money's I good. I like money a lot. <laughs> well, what's good is that I would bring her to my auditions, and there were always a lot of women at the auditions, and we'd all know each other, and and uh, and so I just they'd say, "Oh, I'll take care of her while you go in." And of course, you know, everybody felt chicky and wanting, wanting to, with all these little babies, and so yeah, it was that. So it was a perfect, perfect combination, and we were all rooting for each other. You know, they say actors are you know, cats, and we're not. We really care about each other. It's a, we all know the business, and we all know that it's a matter of luck. You know, a matter of your hair color, or you know, or your eye color, or you match somebody else, or yeah, so. So how would you say, like, Lost in Space, now, did Star Trek come out about the same time? Like, was there any, Star like, Trek, rivalry? Uh, well, Star Trek came out? came out a year later. A year later. After. You guys were first. We were first. You were first. And uh, then um, Star Trek came out. I don't think it affected um, us at all because it was a completely different audience. Yeah. But Batman came out uh, a year later as well. And that changed uh, changed the... Um, the uh, approach to our show it became much more tongue in cheek and you know and and comedic and um, you know and we came out in color the second year the same year and that became almost like a comic strip you know yeah. and so it was uh, really quite beautiful to look at but the storylines began to get a little <laughs> shaky <laughs> but uh, you know I, it be, because our show was essentially in the beginning you know serious it was about family struggling you know, uh, to survive in you know in the alien in alien worlds, yeah. And I and I, um, they're going to re redo the show for Netflix, and I think there's going to be more of that. So um, uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm trying to get my granddaughter Lena Kane into it. She's beautiful and she's funny. Oh, so she wants to get into the actress. Yes, she's going to the New York Film Academy. She loves it. She's uh, learning all about be what goes on behind the camera, as well as in front of it. And she, I mean, she's done, she's done musical theater and theater all of her life. So she, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. I think that maybe not for Judy, because I think they're going in a different direction for for Judy, but maybe for Penny. So let's all, everybody out there, Lena Kane, Lost in Space, Penny Robinson. Nice. Yeah. Now, when are they going to start working? So that's for the film they're going to... It's a Netflix, television right? series, yeah, TV and Netflix, series. yeah. And um, uh, I, I think next year, next 2016, year. yeah. They're, Legendary is doing it, and, uh, you know, I think it's going to be good. Really, really good. Are you, are you 
you guys going to be in there? Any, any well, I, you know, I hope so. I hope we get bits and pieces here and there. Cameos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, Jonathan says there are no cameos, only bit parts. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, I, I'm hoping that we, we get a little something to do in it. Yeah, we should. We yeah, should. I agree. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. How's the convention going for you so far? <gasps> Everyone here is amazing. I mean, I love, I love to meet people. Um, I guess in, as an actor, you really you connect. I mean, that, that's what the whole idea of acting is, is communication and connecting. And, and so that's, that's in my heart. And uh, so, I, yeah, I love to meet people and talk with them and, and uh, share our stories. Because everyone has a story. Yeah. You guys yep. get to have a lot of interesting ones too from the set. Yes, oh yeah. yeah. Any pranks going on behind the scenes, like between films? I mean, you guys are kids, you must have been. Oh no. <laughs> uh, you were all serious. Oh, we were all bad. No, we were bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got into a little bit of trouble, but, but I won't talk about that. <laughs> no, we were, we were good. We were, I mean, we were good, but, but, and we were all very professional, and yeah. we were there when they needed us. Right. But we sort of roamed around the studio a bit and got into trouble there. <laughs> On different sets. And now, are you going to be going to a lot more conventions, or do you have? I'm doing one. Lot of them? Uh, well, I just finished Chiller, which oh, okay. was fun in New Jersey, and I'm going to Texas, just outside of Houston, uh, in January, at the end of January. So, uh, and a, a good friend of mine, Ray Duchek, is uh, going to be helping me get other, uh, uh, it, uh, you know, uh, different uh, shows in this area. Because I because I don't live here, I don't have a connection, but he does. So, oh, okay, cool. so it'll be really good. If you get in touch with me too. I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, do you have a website like people want to try to? Well, I'm on Facebook. On Facebook. Yes, and um, uh, gee, somebody just created the Marta Christian Appreciation Society. Oh, nice. I can't believe that. Oh, I mean, I can't believe great. I. I'm honored. I, you know, it's just lovely. Yes. And so, gosh, I, you know. <laughs> What more could one want? Yes. I mean, I've been married 37 years. Nice. We've been together 42 years. Um, and uh, I have two beautiful daughters. Just amazing. So. Are they both going to get actors or just the one? No, just one. And uh, my um, older daughter is a chef. Oh, nice. And uh, she's, uh, she's really amazing. Oh, really. So well, Thanksgiving she, was really good. Oh, you? yeah, really good. Too good. <laughs> I gained a little. But, you know. That's what happens. Yeah. I had fun. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking well, to us. It was my pleasure. pleasure. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the con. Thank you. Thank I you. will. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Tom and I'm at Northeast Comic Con and Collectibles Extravaganza. I'm talking with Dan Schroeder. How are you doing, Dan? Excellent. How are you doing, Tyro Man? Good. Good to meet you. So tell us a little about the uh, machine here. And this, what's is, going on. this is the chariot from Lost in Space. It's built on a 1965 Snowcat chassis, built with uh, blueprints from 20th Century Fox, all specific. Everything is correct exactly as it was on the show from the seats to the chairs, all right? The, cat, the luggage rack up top with the luggage, all the uh, lights blink off and on sequences, and it runs. Oh, that's cool. Do you get a lot of people wanting to get rides and thing, obviously, right? Well, we don't give rides yet, but we have photo ops where you come. We've been at uh, Chiller in New Jersey and the MIT car show and uh, getting real great response, you know. People come up and they're passionate about it. They, guys like our age grew up with it, and kids nowadays are seeing it on DVD and MeTV like that, so it's a great thing. Cool. Now you're you're a big fan of the show, obviously. Been a big fan since 1965, the 15th of September, 7:30, Channel 5, out of Boston, out of Lynn, Mass. You know, I've been a fan of it. And who would ever thought we'd be standing next to the chariot with Mata Christa and Mark God out front? You know, it's yeah. an incredible thing. You know, um, this is what it's all about. You you don't see anything. This is the only one in the world. You know, great, great thing, great, great thing. You know, it was built not just for us, but for all the fans, you know, to come up and see it. And you see adult men and women who grew up watching it just 
you know, so passionate about it, and you know, almost in tears in some cases. And everybody recognizes it, everybody, you know, because it's an iconic thing. What was the biggest challenge in building this? Oh, the biggest challenge was getting it perfect. You know, we could have made it and just made it, but everything had to be perfect. Um, John, the owner of the company, just was passionate about it. And Chris Pappas, his technical advisor, had to get it right. And Jake, the foreman, if it wasn't right, Jake wasn't going to do it. It was a hurdle, but we all had a passion about it, and we wanted to get it done. Not just for us again, but for everybody. Yeah, yeah it looks great. Yeah, Good it's, job. You know, it's, it's, you can't get any better than this. Yeah. You know, the original we'll probably never see, unfortunately, but we have this. It's the only one in the world. It's great, great, great thing. What happened with the original? After the show, <clears throat> it, excuse me, it was sold to a ski lodge in California. Um, this guy, David Trez, saw it, tried to buy it, and they wouldn't sell it. When the ski logs went belly up, he bought it. And in the 70s, and he's trying to rebuild it in his garage. And, you know, we wish him the best, but we, we probably will never see it. But we have this, and this is as good, as good, you know, an incredible, incredible thing. You know, ultimate guy toy, you know, really, ultimate yeah. guy toy. How long did it take to build? Eight months. Eight months from start. We. We got it from a uh, gentleman in Idaho, brought it in the middle of the storm last year. You know, we brought it up, rode it over the snowbank, come down. We thought we were going to lose it, but it runs great, you know, in the snow. Stripped it down, cleaned it, and started piece by piece by piece. You can go on YouTube and see what's called Chariot Build, and there's um, videos of the whole building sequence from when the snow cat arrived to getting ready for this show. You can see it down in Chilla with all, with all four of the stars there. Oh, nice. It's a pretty incredible thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What so, are the stars' reaction when they see it? They, they were amazed. amazed. Yeah. They were amazed. It was like, you know, I couldn't believe it. We were at the show, and we were outside, and it was cold. And uh, we were waiting and waiting. All of a sudden, they just appeared. And they were in awe. Like I say, you can go online and Facebook and see the stuff like that. But they were thought, you know, they were never thought, you know. To them, it was a series. But I think now they really appreciate it more when they see stuff like this being built. Yeah. All the fans being there, you know. So it was pretty amazing. It was, they, were, they were really, they, they, they liked it a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we don't have anything right now. But keep an eye on our, uh, our uh, Facebook page or our, our email, Chariot Build. And we'll be around, especially, you know, we're from the Lynn area. You don't know when you'll see us. And we'll be there. Never forget, we're not lost in space. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thanks for talking. My about pleasure. Us. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. We'll keep an eye out. Have a good one. <laughs> good. See you later. Hey, hi, I'm Tyro Man. I'm at NE's Northeast Comic Con in Wilmington, and I'm talking with Rachel Kelly. How are you doing, Rachel? I'm doing good. Thank you. So you can tell us a little bit about your series, Color World. Sure. Um, it's a realistic superhero story. The series um, follows a girl named Wendy who can sense emotions when she touches people. She's also broken in college, so she goes to an allergy study for more money. But when she comes out of it, she touches someone and they die. So now she has lethal skin. She obviously wants to undo that. Come to find out, the people who ran the study targeted her because they knew she had an ability in the first place. Now, how long did it take you to come up with the series? And uh, well, I started writing in 2009, and the first book didn't get published until 2013 in December. So that kind of gives you an idea of like how long it was in the works for. Yeah. What was the most difficult part of getting the series together? Um, well, marketing is always a, the hardest part. For me, the writing is the easy, the fun, the part that I want to do all the time. But obviously, um, books don't sell themselves. So. <laughs> So we had to come up with a marketing plan, and so that's kind of where all of the artwork at our booth comes from, is from all of the artists that we collaborate with on the series. So you obviously collaborate with a lot of artists from the prints and stuff we see at your booth. Yeah, um, we did a Kickstarter project to do illustrated editions of the books, and um, we wanted to, we didn't want to pick one artist, so we decided to have a different artist with each book, and it's a seven book series, so that's seven different artists, just for the illustrated editions. And then we did a second Kickstarter to raise money to do the comic book. So 
So that's, you have an, an interior artist, and we have a, a cover artist, and a cover artist colorist. So we collaborate with a lot of different artists. Um, sometimes we do mashups between like popular characters and Wendy from the book series and make fan art uh, with the two characters together. So we have a lot of different things going on and so all of the artwork, all done by artists that we collaborate with. Alright, cool. Cool. Yeah. So what's the next hot you're working on now? Like, uh, I'm working on the fifth book fifth right book. now. Yeah. Um, and then the comic book is, I don't really have a huge part in that. Uh, but that is in the works, is um, doing the comic book, which should be out by the beginning or the end of the year, beginning of January. Um, and so that will be a whole different audience that we'll be able to reach the story with. Now, I think you told me earlier that you have the book and then it got translated to comic book. So that's oh, yeah. so, kind of the same right, story. So it, it's the same exact story. And they are trying to follow it generally um, as closely as possible to the book. Obviously, there's some limitations between going between the two formats, but for the most part, and I have read um, the first issue, uh, it follows the book pretty closely. You just get to see some different points of view because it's a first-person book, so it's told from the main character's point of view, but in the comic book, you get to kind of zoom out and see like the other characters and what's going on with them, which I think is really fun. So, And, and it's kind of like someone adding to my story because I didn't really think about you know, other characters' points of view at that time. I just thought of the one character, and so it's been fun for me. Oh, that's great. Now, did you um, grow up reading comic books? Like, were you interested no, in superheroes No, I didn't. Um, I've always like, been interested in superheroes. Yeah. Superheroes. Um, so now it's about superheroes. Well, I grew up, uh, I basically got into the sci-fi world with sci my dad okay. through Star Trek. So we watched uh, first Star Trek and then Star Trek Next Generation mm -hmm. every single night, like clockwork. Whole time growing up, my dad was a big Star Trek fan. So that's how I got into that. And then I think Lois and Clark Adventures of Superman came on TV. There was a series when I was a teenager. And so that got me into um, the superhero stuff. And I also watched Spider-Man and X-Men cartoons as a kid. So I didn't actually read comic books until I was married. And my husband got me into comic books. So I was reading several titles. And I'm really a big fan of the Superman Batman series. So I'm really looking forward to that movie. Um, so that's kind of where I went with that, but I got to this point, especially recently, with so many books out, or so many movies out there, which is great, um, but it's like so fantastic. Yeah. Like the fantastic asset, asset or aspect has made it almost um, unreachable, like it uh, unrelatable to people because you just can't picture yourself in that world. And so um, that's kind of where the series came from. I was a little frustrated with the fact that there's so many like fantastic movies with like amazing action and that's really the focus rather than like how exactly is society and people how are they being affected by the fact that there are these superhuman abilities existing so that's where the series delves into that's nice that's great that's great yeah. now do you have a website if people want to go and yes colorworldbooks.com so color spelled the american way <laughs> colorworldbooks.com uh, I because we have done some shows in Canada, and so sometimes people are confused about <laughs> Hey, Soul the World Color. But yeah, we ha and then we're on every social media outlet out there as at Color World Books. Oh, okay, great. Mm -hmm. great. Well, yeah. thanks for talking to us. Thank we you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good luck with care. the series. It's Thank great. you. I appreciate it. Hey, have a good one. Hi, I'm Tyro Man, and I'm at Northeast Comic Con, and I'm talking with Matthew Fillion. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? How's the uh, how's the convention going for you so far? So far, so good. I like this one. It's um this is one of my local shows, so I like to make, I like to come back here every year and especially during the holidays and stuff. So this is I, I, this is my second year um, here at Northeast. So cool. Very good, very good. So tell us a little bit about your book. Sure. Um, I call it a, my young adult superhero series, but I wrote it to entertain myself so that either says something about me or something else. But and it's just like my love letter to the comics I read growing up and um, wanted to. I tell a comic book style story, but in prose, uh, you know, in novel form. Mostly, I always say like, I would have written it as a comic, but I can't draw. So I had to, you work with the tools you've got, right? Um, and it's just a, a group of young heroes who probably shouldn't have the powers that they have and the stumbling blocks along the way. And um, it's part of an ongoing series because I want it to be like like a comic book series where it can run as long as people care about the characters too. So, so how long did it take you to write the book? Um, I, I kind of cheated because I had the story in mind for years and years, but when I sat down to actually write it, it only took maybe six months. Um, and like it's it's it, I'm kind of being dishonest if I say, well, I wrote each of the book only each of the books in the series only took like three or three to five months to write them, but I knew the story already. It was just a matter of like 
I have all my notes sit down and write it and get, and get it out on the on, on the page so um, I've been each one takes about six months to, to, to produce and I'm on uh, the third book now so I'm, I'm cranking away you know so you got three there's three of them right uh, now. three so far and the fourth one will come out um, sometime in January February we're uh, we're working on getting the, the fourth one out uh, as soon as we can so have you had a lot of response to the book so far more than I could have hoped for, actually. It's uh, like I said, it's, it's I'm, I'm still new. I'm still you know a, a, a very small name in a, in a world with a lot of authors. But I've had a, so much more positive feedback than I was expecting. So it's it makes it worthwhile. Too. That's why there's more than one. I figured I'll write one, and if nobody nobody reads it, then I wrote a book. But um, people are people are, are uh, reading it and asking for more. So I'll, I'm going to keep going as long as people care about it too. So has there any interest in like Hollywood to like? Make a movie. Uh, that's my dream. I, w I wish. <laughs> I uh, I got one. I got one query, but they thought it was a spy book, not a superhero book. And they went, "Oh, we, this is what we're looking for." I'm like, you know, that's that's fair. They, they, they thought it was the wrong genre. <laughs> so um, I would I would love to see it made into a film at some point or TV. You know, I'm I'm not picky anything, yeah. right? So. Yeah, but superhero genre seems to be pretty good right now. I, I couldn't have picked a better uh, time to do it, right? I mean, especially young young adult books are popular and super. I didn't do it on purpose. I wish I could say I did it on purpose. I can't give myself credit. It just happened to be what I wrote at the time, and I got lucky. Um, and there's not a ton of superhero prose novels out there. I thought there'd be more. I thought I'd have be like, uh, you know, one of. Yeah, but um, I think I think a lot of people still like to work in visual formats with superheroes. So I'm not, you know, I feel like I'm in a a pretty fun uh, niche, yeah. It's it's uh, and um, I, I didn't do it on purpose, but heck, you know, like it's if young adults popular and superheroes popular, I might as well enjoy, you know, enjoy the chance to write about it while uh, while it's popular too, you know. Mm. Now, do you have a website if people want to find more about the book and check sure it out? Uh, it is um, theindestructiblesbook.com. Um, it, I wish I could have gotten the indestructibles.com, but somebody else already had that one. So it's the indestructiblesbook.com, um, and uh, and it's all over the place. I'm on I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I uh, where who is indestructible on Facebook? Because I wanted to. Be, I, I thought it was fun. I probably should have. It's a little. It's a, little, it's a lot of letters, but it's. Uh, um, and that's been fun because that's where my readers and I interact. I, I have a conversation every day with people that have read the book, and that's been that's been a blast. So. Um. Now, do you have a? Favorite character from the book? Um, so it's a group of them, right? It's a group. It of is superheroes. a group of them. You know, like it's like you shouldn't you say you, you shouldn't say you have now. a favorite. But I I can't I can't lie. That there's a character called Entropy Emily who um, she's like our voice. Like em Emily would hang out at a con, you know, and and she and um, I wanted to acknowledge with the books that they exist in a world where people have seen Star Wars and people have seen you know watched watched anime and like that. So she will make jokes like where the adventure kind of reminds her of events in other stories and she kind of breaks the fourth wall a little bit and, and makes a lot of pop culture references and she's been actually the most popular character too. people um, uh, associate. associate with her because I mean I always say she'd hang out with us you know she'd yeah. be here at the con with the rest of us so um, so she's uh, and she's my favorite one to write because she's the comic relief too which which is always when you're writing big you know cinematic adventure stuff it's always nice to have the the, the smart Alec in the in the mix too so so do you go to a lot of conventions? You um, say you go to local. Uh, more and more. I'm actually like I'm doing like this, the the circle keeps getting bigger. Um, I'm I'm still mostly New England because I'm trying to um, I'm still small enough that I got to keep you know the travel costs down and stuff. But I've gone um, you know like Boston, Rhode Island, Connecticut. I love to get to some somewhere in New York next year. I'm trying to like reach out a little. Yeah, well, if I it, it, it might be a little bit too too, too much for I'm, I'm too small a fish for that. But it's. Um, you know, I like to. I'm trying to expand my boundaries every year because I would, if I, if I could, if I had, the, if I had the, if the readership gets big enough, I would do a, con I would do a convention every weekend. I love this. I would actually, I would actually do every single weekend. I would do a show like this because I love it. It's, it's, too, it's, it's fun. So. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the con. Thanks Thank for taking time to talk to us. Thanks for interviewing. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Hi, I'm Tyler Man, and I'm at Northeast Comic Con, and I'm talking about Alex Simmons. How you doing, Alex? Hey, I'm fine. How you doing? Thank you. Nice to meet you, Tyro Man. Yes. Hi, folks. Now you're an artist. You do stuff for Archie and a whole well, bunch actually, of other I'm stuff. I'm a writer. I'm a, I'm a yes. I'm a freelance writer. That's okay. I'll, I'll get you later. Uh, I'm a freelance writer. I have been for a number of years. I was an actor before that, and that led me into writing plays, which led me into writing novels, which led me into writing comics. 
Yeah. So that's hey. a long history. Of yeah. Hey, you know, I, I like to stay busy. Yeah. <laughs> you wear a lot of different hats. Yeah, exactly. And they all fit. Ni- no, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So what was some of your early acting stuff? Early acting. Well, you know, I did theater for a long period theater. of time, and then I pushed my way into, you know, clawing and, 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 and grabbing there. I pushed into uh, some television extra work. Uh, I was in films uh, extra work again uh, in Ghostbusters and... Uh, some of the other movies. There was a De Niro uh, movie that I did. I'm trying to remember the name of it right now. Uh, oh, The Art of Love. That's right, with Meryl Streep and Robert De Niro. Yes. Yep. So I had fun doing Oh, and The Wiz, the movie, oh. as opposed to the show that was on television oh, last night. Cool. Yes, yeah, so I was in The Wiz, too, the Emerald City sequence. So that was fun. So, you know, I spent a certain number of years traveling around and doing shows and so forth. But as I said, I, I, I sort of started playwriting because at the time I was doing this, there were not a, a, a wide range of roles for African-American men. Right. You know, we either wound up doing sort of stereotypical roles or we were the angry right. black man. Yeah. So I wanted to create some things in between, so I started writing. And one of the plays that I wrote was, the, uh, was Sherlock Holmes in the Hands of Othello. So it was a Sherlock Holmes mystery, but it involved a real-life African-American fa- or African family, African-British family, uh, in the story that actually existed in real life. Ira Aldridge. All right, so he'd gone to Europe from America and become a star in the 1800s, so I worked that story into a Sherlock Holmes mystery. So that was, that was you know, a breakout for me. And then, as I said, I wrote children's novels and certain some mysteries, and then I wound up in one of my first loves, comics. Oh, that's awesome. As my children's mysteries. R- Raven's League. There you go, right here. Oh, nice. Middle grade, Sherlock Holmes, Baker Street of regular type kids, running around the east end of London, solving crime. This one actually has Buffalo Bill's Wild West show in it, and you know that's a, a fun story there, and we oh, did another one where they saved Sherlock Holmes' life. What was the first comic? So was it- the first comic book that I actually got published th- professionally was um, a supernatural story called The Demon Chronicles, which Eclipse Comics did some years ago with Jim Sherman as the artist. And that was, you know, about the supernatural investigators. So that was my first. Then after a while, there was a, a sort of a lull. And then I don't, I, well, yeah, I do. <clears throat> then I created a series called Blackjack, about an African-American soldier of fortune in the 1930s. So that was my own project. But I produced that, and then that led to me getting attention. And DC uh, actually invited me in to do... Um, uh, Batman, so I did a uh, miniseries, Batman Orpheus Rising. Uh, I also did a lot of Scooby Doo's. Uh, I did a couple of Superman, and then I did, I uh, went to do a lot of work for these people. <laughs> yes, yeah, okay. So, and I'm still doing work for Archie, as well as still working on Blackjack and, and other projects. So, I'm, I'm writing a lot, you know. What's some of the background in Blackjack? What is that about? Well, uh, again, historically speaking, uh, the early 1900s or late 1800s into the early 1900s, a lot of African-American men wound up fighting wars overseas, you know. And in these other countries, the men felt more like men, you know. They, were, they, they felt, you know, they were able to show their strength and, and their fearlessness and so forth. So many of them didn't want to return to the United States. Why come back and be a porter or, you know, or, or stepped on pretty much? So in, in fictionally, my lead character, Aaron Day, his father was one of those men. And his thing was, I can go off to another country and make money and send it back to my family. The wife goes, that's nice, you're sending us money, but your kids don't know you. So we're going to travel with you. And we're going to go wherever you go, except when you're off in the jungles fighting, we're going to be in some village or town or city, you know, far off, but not that far, so that it's easier for you to get back to us. Because, you know, in the 30s, you couldn't just hop a jet and be somewhere in a few hours. So Aaron, my lead character, grows up to want to be like dad because, you know, the warrior hero kind of thing. But his mother has introduced him and his sister to these other cultures while they're there, you know, to the best of her ability. So he's got a wider view of the world. And so at a certain point he realizes, you know, there are things I'm being paid to do or being asked to do that I understand the ramifications of them and they don't sit well with me. So I have to start deciding where my father ends and where I begin and what I will and won't do for the money. So I wrote this series not only because I like it, you know, adventure and pulp and, and that all of that excitement, yeah. but also I think we needed positive, strong African American male images where we just weren't running around blowing people away and jumping the women. Yeah. You know, and, and actually we were articulate, you know, which was another thing, you know. Yeah, right, we had more than right. six syllable words, you know. Yeah. So that was that was that. You know, it's it's taken a number of years to build up the the fan base. We have some new books out. We have one now that's called Blackjack. There came uh, a dark hunter. Try and say that together. Blackjack. There came a dark hunter. 
uh, which is out on, on Amazon right now and it's doing very well and you know I'm excited about that and there's some other things in the works and I've enjoyed working on a project where I feel like I'm putting forth some positive images. That's awesome. Yeah. Great job. Now, do you go to a lot of conventions? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't put it that way, okay, because there are hundreds of conventions out there, oh, right, yeah. folks? Yeah. But I go to as many as I can, and I travel either, you know, in my own persona as Alex Simmons here, which is this lovely shot of me right here, or I go with the Kids Comic Con which is, is our signs on the other side. But the Kids Comic Con is an initiative I started with some friends back in 2007. Oh, wow. And it's a, an all-age appropriate event, right? We started it in New York City. Hi, New York. We started in New York City uh, on the campus of Bronx Community College. And it's once a year, and families and kids can come to this, and there's no inappropriate material. You know, we have free workshops where they meet artists and they get to train with some of them and see how the business works, but also just, just the fun of drawing and learning how to do that. And that became popular enough that people would say, well, can you do this in our town or our city? And I said, well, oh, wow. we don't have that kind of money. We don't, you know, right? They said, well, we could, we could provide this, this, and this. I said, well, we can do a road show. So that's what this is here at NECC. You know, this is our road show where we bring a few of the artists and we have a nice little setup and we have workshops for the kids here at the table behind us. And we enjoy doing that. So we've gone as far north as Buffalo, New York, as far south as Miami, Florida. And uh, we've already gone to Africa one year and we went to Senegal and we were there for 10 days. We did all these programs with the kids. We were there with a school in Africa as well as uh, connected to the American Embassy. So that was exciting. And I've also gone to the West Indies with it. Wow. That's, so yeah, so that's, that's why I said, yeah, I do a lot of cons, but it's, uh, it's eclectic, you know, yeah. right, yeah. you know. Yeah, but you know, I've enjoyed it and I know a number of people in the business who've been really very supportive, like, you know, George Perez, who's here, uh, Scott Hanna, uh, Tim Fielder, uh, just a number of really good people out there who've, who've attached themselves to the theme of not forgetting kids and, and keeping the excitement and the wonder of comics available to them. And certainly, you know, from the literacy standpoint, it's reading, you know, whoa, what a concept, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's great. that's great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sounds like a great thing. Yeah. So do you have some sites that people want to follow you? Or oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Well, okay, so in terms of the Kids Comic Con, it's literally Kids, K-I-D-S, Comic, C-O-M-I-C, Con. KidsComicCon.com. That's on the web. Also for, you know, my Blackjack, by the way, this is the cover of the new book. Uh, on, it's on Amazon. But, as I said, for Blackjack, it's BlackjackAdventures.com. And then my... Wonderful. I don't know if the camera will put this up, but if you want to reach out to me, it's Alex Simmons here and now. So it's Alex at Simmons here and now dot com. And it's you know any number of ways to reach out, find more information. We're on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Kids Comic Con is on Facebook. Blackjack Adventures is on Facebook. So there's no excuse for not finding me. Okay. <laughs> You're out there. Thank you, and and uh, yeah, thank you for having me on your show. No, yes, yeah. take time to talk to us. Yeah, thank you. You'll let Pleasure me know when it's you. on the air, right? Absolutely. Okay, okay. Thanks, everybody. Take yeah. care. Nice guy. <laughs> <laughs>Hi, I'm Tyler Man. I'm at Northeast Comic Con. I'm talking with Frank Avrouche. How are you doing, sir? Okay, great. Great to meet you. So you've uh, played Bozo for a number of years on television. Yeah. I played it for 12 years, from 1958 to 1970. How many uh, people played Bozo? Well, originally the, the concept was to have different, different shows in different cities. But uh, after a while, the guy who owns the franchise from Hollywood noticed that the show we were doing in Boston on Channel 5 was like uh, spectacular. The ratings were going through the roof and he says, what's happening? So he came out and saw our show and then decided that it's much easier to have one show and syndicate it. And okay. so that's what he, he did. He syndicated our show. So we were all over the country at one time. Yeah, and it worked out fine, yeah. Now, did you get started because you were an actor and you applied for a job? Or you were a clown No, I was actually working at Channel 5 oh, okay. at that time as a regular announcer. And I did other things there at the station. And then when he came and originally started to do it, uh, he, there were auditions. And for some reason, <laughs> he said, okay, you're it, Frank. And 
and that's what happened. And it was like Topsy. We were when we first started. It was in the reconverted radio studio at in the old Payne Furniture Building in Park Square in Boston. And then uh, we had maybe 30 people in the audience, 20, 30. And then when we moved to Morrissey Boulevard in Dorchester, we had like 125 kids every day in big studio. And I had developed a whole set of characters, almost like the Wizard of Oz. I had Mr. Lion and Kooky Kangaroo and uh, I had a little gal, Judy Valentine, who sang songs. So it was a, a major show, and we lasted for 12 years. We did it, and then and then it sort of faded out. I actually remember the show. I remember watching it. It was really awesome. Really, at that yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, it was a good show. Now, it's kind of curious. You know how the name Bozo became part of the English language? People say, oh, you're different. being a Bozo. Yeah, I know. it. Yeah, don't, don't be a Bozo. Well, oh, that's a Bozo no-no. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know how that started, but anyway, uh, our show was a little different. And I, I meet people today who, my audience now are people in their 40s and 50s, and they says, oh my goodness, you were part of my childhood. And I, they, uh, they come by and they just want to tell me how much they enjoyed it. They wish they could get tickets to go to the show. Our tickets, we, you almost have to wait a year to get after a while, because we just only could hold so many people in the audience and it was free we didn't charge it but kids love to come they they could get the toys and the treasure chest and then we played games and we sang songs and we had puppets and it was a very fun time for me yeah that was a, it was a very cool show i remember yeah, okay. I remember it was really cool i'm glad it was part of your childhood yeah, it was. Yeah. well i saw it yeah <laughs> what did you do after the well then we went on and we did the movie so the great entertainment on weekends. This was before Turner Classic Movies and stuff. We had uh, made a, a big event. I would come out and introduce the movies. These are the old MGM films like Spencer Tracy and Clark Gable and Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire, all, the, all those classic movies. And uh, that lasted, that show I did for 17 years. So I did both. I had a kid show, and then I did, and I did the movie show. And I really loved doing the movie show because, I, even though I was a movie buff, uh, I learned an awful lot because I had to do the research and beforehand and stuff. So it was fun. Now, do you have a website if people want to go up and? Yeah, I do have. It's uh, uh, bostonman.com, and if you go on there. You'll have a whole history. Because one other thing I did on, the, remember the, the Good Day show? Oh, yes. Yep. That was our morning show. And one of the features they had of what's going on in the city and around the suburbs. Right. So I took that when I retired about 15 years ago. And I started my own website. And that sort of keeps me busy. Oh, yeah. Busier than I want to be sometimes. Because I try to keep up with all the things going on in the city. But it's fun. So, but do you, do you go to a lot of conventions and stuff? Uh, I've done a series there. Of, I've been uh, to New Jersey because our show was syndicated yep. around the country. So, I was in New Jersey, uh, California. Uh, we're booked, I think, to go up to Burlington, Vermont. Uh, I, yeah, I've, I've done about a half dozen, maybe. That's good. Thanks so much for talking to us. It was a pleasure right. meeting you, sir. All right, same here. I'm proud of my tireless. Okay. Awesome. Bye <laughs> bye. 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 Hi, I'm Tyler Man. I'm at NECC and I'm with, talking with Sia. Um, how are you doing, Sia? I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks for taking time to talk with us. How's the convention been so far? It's been really fun. Uh, everybody's been really nice and supportive. So, I mean, yeah, it's a nice little show. How long have you been a professional artist? Uh, about five years. Five years? Yeah. So did they ask, did they commission you to do the, the book? This is, uh, the, you're working on Star Wars now, right? Yeah, um, so I mean, I kind con of contract with uh, Marvel and uh, NECC commissioned me to do this cover for the Marvel Star Wars release of uh, Vader Down Number One. So, oh, okay. yeah. So what other books are you working for? Um, I, um, I do covers for Marvel, but I have my own comic book. It's oh, called... You do. 
Okay. Lola XOXO, it's actually that book right there. Oh, okay. um, so, yeah. Good. Well, yeah. <laughs> there you go. So that's, that's Lola right there? Yeah. So she's my creator own. We're on the second volume right now. I'm working on that. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, that's about it. How's that book been doing? Um, it's doing, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I mean, the reception is, you know, better than I expected. So I, I really appreciate all the support. So. Yeah. How did you get started being an artist? Like, I've always piece. wanted to be a comic book artist. Yeah. Yeah. So it was my dream job. job. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I mean, I, I read comics as a kid, so that was a no-brainer. Yeah. So what's the first book that you got to work on? Like, uh, it was like a it was like a Zenoscope um, annual, and I was just one of the artists. And then after that, it was like a bunch of um, Aspen comics covers and stuff like that. So. Do you have a favorite piece? Uh, anything that it changes from week to week. Does it? Okay. I'll like one, and then a the following week, I'll try to do something that I, I, you know, would like more. I guess. <laughs> so it changes. Now, do you have a couple of websites that people want to try to find out about your book? And um, you could check AspenComics.com. It's like A S P E N Comics.com, and then there's SiaAnimation.com. That's S I Y A N I M A T I O N.com. Or you could just Google my name, and you know. Uh, okay. If it's easier, yeah, whatever's easiest. Cool. Any advice you'd give to like a young artist starting? Um, just keep drawing a lot. Yeah. Just practice and draw things you like, you know, because there'll be plenty of time to draw things you're not too familiar with, right? right yeah. So yeah, of course, and it's a fun profession. It is. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Nice. So do you go to a lot of conventions? Um, a few here and there. You know, like six maybe a year, about six. Uh, anything else you want to share with our viewers? And stuff? Oh, I appreciate the support and the show has been awesome. So I really, you know, I had a lot of fun. So yeah, right, cool. thank you. Thanks for taking time to talk with us. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ty Man. I'm at Northeast Comic Con. I'm talking with John Wesley Ship. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Uh, a little bit hard. We have a contest going on here, but we'll try to make do. That's cool. So, how did you get picked to be the Flash in the first series? Me back. Well, uh, April Webster, multiple Emmy Award-winning casting director, knew my work from New York, and so when the call went out, she called my manager Hank McCann at the time and told him about the new show and and had messengered the script over for me to read. And I loved the material. So I auditioned along with a whole bunch of other guys, and uh, I ended up getting it. Well, cool. cool. Now, now, were you a big superhero fan back then? Or I wasn't. I wasn't. I, I, I really wasn't. And sometimes that can be helpful because, you know, they combine elements of all the different characters. And so I took Danny Bilson and Paul Tomeo's script was so rich and layered. Uh, that I took everything that I needed right off their pages. Oh, okay, cool. Now, what was your favorite? Did you have like a favorite show from back then, like an episode from the original? Well, I love the Nightshade episodes. The Nightshade. I love the Nightshade. I, I put it like this, you know, I get to play a wonderful sort of mentor, uh, protege, father-son role with Grant on the new Flash. The new one, yeah. And on my Flash, that was the relationship I had with Jason Bernard. Oh, okay. I was like a kid around him because I was very aware that I was in the presence of somebody that knew a whole lot more about acting mm -hmm. than I did, which he knew a whole lot more about being a superhero than I did. So it totally fit the story. Wow, great, great. Now, how do you like the, the new series? Did they call you because they knew you were the Flash in the old series? Or did, how did that come about? Yeah, I mean, the fact that I... I was, they wanted to incorporate our audience from the, from the show, very faithful audience, into the new show. But also beyond that, our three producers, I worked with Greg Berlanti on Dawson's Creek, and uh, Andrew Kreisberg was a big fan of the first show. Jeff Johns and David Nutter both were fans of the first effort. So, uh, but I was very pleased when Andrew, they asked that question, they said, well, we cast him because he's a good actor. He said if he had just been if he had just been some guy running around in a red rubber suit, not so much. Yeah. 
Uh, I guess everybody likes the Phoenix over there. <laughs> so you also worked on um, Dawson's Creek too. And yes. So what other roles have you done besides those big major ones? Oh my God, I, I've done so many. I go to imdb.com. That'll list all my uh, all my uh, independent film and television and guest star appearances and series. I have two Emmys for daytime: one for Santa Barbara, one for As the World Turns. I've been on Broadway in a Tony Award winning, I feel like I'm tooting my own horn here, but you asked the question, uh, Tony Award winning uh, drama, dancing at Lunas. So I've, I've, I've been very, very, had a very rich and full career for the past 35 years and, and it shows no signs of letting up. Now, a lot of actors say they kind of like the theater stuff over the film stuff a lot of times because it's the personal thing of being with the audience. Do you feel the same way, or do you kind of like the film stuff a little better? Well, that's why we do conventions. I mean, this is the per where you get the personal reaction. The verdict is in when you come to these conventions. And, you know, they're not shy about telling you what they think, you know. But I love all of it. I like balancing it. It's th There are different energies involved in each one. The most important thing is that it's an interesting character. That's like they said, do you want to come back to The Flash. And I said, if there's an interesting part for me to play where I can contribute, and they came up with it in Henry Allen. Oh, great. Right. Now, do you, do, do you go to a lot of conventions then? Uh, a lot? I started going to conventions when the original Flash was, came out on DVD in 2006. And, uh, and then a lot of, I've had a lot of invitations. As you can tell from my voice, I've accepted yeah. too many this year but you know they say will you come here will you come here we got so i've got okay yeah but then when i put it all together australia <laughs> new zealand wales wow. atlanta detroit you know uh, san diego it's been it's like and then trying to fit in shooting flash episodes yeah. then i just did a little movie in new york uh in between wales and here uh, no no in between australia and wales a little movie called night sweats thriller with allison mackey um, so it's been it's been a wild year. Now, do you have like a couple of websites or anything if people want to? I'm I'm active on Twitter. That's where I post most of my professional stuff. I try to keep my opinions and 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 political passions uh, for fate, my private Facebook page. But people are welcome to come over and follow me there as well and join the conversation. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for taking time to talk to us. I do appreciate it a lot. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Tyro Man. I'm at Northeast Comic Con. I'm talking to Cassine Gaines. How you doing, sir? I'm great. How are you? It would have been good. So tell us a little bit about some of, the, some of the books you're doing. Sure. So I have three books. I have We Don't Need Roads, the Making of the Back to the Future trilogy, which is all about the, uh, the complicated road, no pun intended, that the filmmakers had to getting this uh, trilogy made. I have a book on a Christmas story, a Christmas story behind the scenes of a holiday classic. And I also have my first one, which is Inside Pee Wee's Playhouse. And it's all about the Pee Wee Herman phenomenon of the 1980s. Oh, cool. Now, how did you get behind the scenes to get all this research and information from? How did well, I interviewed the casting crew. I got lots of rare and never-before-seen pictures that I was able to put inside the book as well. Um, and all of the books include brand new interviews um, and information that's never been uh, available anywhere before. Oh, cool. So you were, were you there behind the scenes when they were like filming and stuff? No, I was just a really big fan and um, really approached it first from just wanting to find out more information myself. And uh, someone suggested that I put this information together in a book. And so that's how the Pee Wee book came about and then the other two followed. Now, t being an author, did you have to, did you take a lot of class, English classes and stuff? Or like, how did you get involved in writing? Yeah, so in college, I majored in English, American studies, which is sort of like social history and journalism and media studies. So really, this fits really well into my educational background. And um, I, I like to try and bring like a novelistic approach to these books. So they're not just, you know, like reading a Wikipedia article, but really reading a story about how these films were made. 
Are you working on another one right now? Or I am. I can't say what it is just yet, but if you if you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, keep up with me on Facebook, it's all at Kasim Gaines. That's C-A-S-E-E-N-G-A-I-N-E-S. Uh, then you'll find out about my next stuff. So how's the convention been going for you? It's been going really well. It's so much fun. I get to meet people like you, and I'm here with the cast of A Christmas Story. Claudia Wells from Back to the Future is right around the corner, and she's a friend of mine. So it's been a lot of fun. So do you go to a lot of conventions? Yes, I do, actually. I This year has been really crazy for me. It's 2015, which is the, a big year for Back to the Future. So um, I've been to London. I've been to St. Louis. I've been to Los Angeles. It's It's been a lot of fun. Wow, cool. A lot of traveling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I need roads. The book doesn't need roads, but I need roads. <laughs> yes, yes. So what advice would you give to like a young, aspiring writer? You know, I would say just write about what you're interested in. You know, it's, you know, People are, are fans of different things. People are interested in different things, whether it's zombies, science fiction, romance, whatever the case may be. Just be true to what you like and, and do it, and you know other people will follow. Now, have you ever had writer's block? Like, what's the most difficult part, you would say, of writing? Uh, I think the most difficult part is uh, it's, it's lonely writing. You know, the most difficult part, I think, is waking up early in the morning and, and staying up late at night and everyone else wanting to go out and have fun, and you have to have a date with your computer. I think that that's I think that's the hardest part for me actually. <laughs> well thanks for taking time talking to us. Thank um, you. You already told us about your website, right? Yes, yeah, yeah it's Kasimgains.com and I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Find me, I'm all over. Well thanks again. Great, thank, thank you. Take care. Hi, Tyro Man, I'm at Northeast Comic Con and I'm talking with Steven Najarian. Yes. Hey, how's it going? Good, how's it going? How's the convention been so far? Uh, it's going pretty well. You know, I'm having fun, talking to a lot of fans, you know, uh, meeting a lot of new people. It's nice to get out of my studio and actually see people, you know, when, you, when you're at home and you just post something online, it just kind of goes into the ether and you really don't know what the response is. So being here and actually seeing the, like, you know, it's always feels very good. <laughs> so it's a nice confidence boost. So, now how long have you been an artist? Professionally, um, professionally I would say uh, 2013. I think was when I got my first paid illustration job. Oh, nice. But um, I went to art school. I graduated in 2008, and after I graduated, it was a lot of part-time jobs and a lot of hours at home. You know, working on new pieces, building a portfolio, um, going to conventions as an attendee, showing my work to other artists, getting feedback. So it's not like I just decided one day I'm going to be an artist. And you know, it's you know, I've been work, working towards this since I was a kid. You know, since high school, really. So it takes a long time to get to get in the industry to to start even making a living or money as an artist so now, I do like your work it's very nice what do you like drawing the most fantasy dragons, dragons? <laughs> dragons. that's easy okay. yeah if I can do if I can do dragons and castles that's kind of like that's, that's that? yeah yeah dragons castles and mountains is the trifecta where I can't say no so yeah but dragons so are you trying to get into like the magic card? Yes, yes. I I play magic. I'm a huge fan of it. It's the one of the things that really brought me into the fantasy genre when I was little. I saw my brother and his friends playing magic, and I got into it. Um, so it's been a big part of my life, and it's a dream of a lot of fantasy artists to get to work on that game. So. That's the goal. That's that's the that's the the goal. After that is you know book covers and private commissions and you know working on my own stuff, you know. But um, magic is you know some, something something that I think every illustrator wants to do, you know, or even a fan of a game like they you see the artwork and it's just so inspiring and I do like so good. Yeah. So yeah. 
Now, do you have a favorite artist that you like, that you follow, or? I mean, are we talking living artists or from all time? All time, all time I'd have to say Alphonse Mucha. Um, you know, everyone knows him for his Art Nouveau stuff, but um, he's one of the most amazing oil painters. Uh, I went backpacking through Europe uh, in 2011, and he had this epic series of paintings called the Slavic Epic. They're like 20 paintings. They're ginormous. Each painting has like 20 figures in it, and they're incredible so he would he would be my favorite uh, living artist right now I'd say Donato Giancola um, Chris Ron Dave Palumbo a um, lot of fantasy illustrators um, but those those guys are definitely the ones that I kind of look at the most right now so of the work you've done so far do you have a favorite that, uh, say, um, like, like that child thing you came I mean, there's ones that like mean more to me than others, and they mean more to me for different reasons. This is the piece that got me my first paid illustration job, so that has a special place in my heart. Um, this was a personal painting I did. Uh, it was an oil painting. It was my first original painting sale. Um, I use it for my profile picture on most of my art, you know, sites like Tumblr, my Facebook page, uh, you know, all, all those all those sites, that's the, the profile image. That, so that, that one, like. that smog, um, that was the first oil painting I did that I really felt like I nailed the technique that I wanted to do. Um, it's the only oil painting I have of mine that's hanging in my apartment. So it's a painting that I like looking at, you know, because sometimes you do a painting and as you finish it and you're like, all right, I'm done. Like, you know, after a while you kind of don't want to look at it anymore. So, um, you know, I'm really like, these are two of my most newest pieces. I'm really happy with how they came out. Um, you know, that one's the newest one, so that's great. <laughs> so, um, you know, I feel like I started to figure out a lot of stuff on this one. This one's probably my best-selling piece right now. So, you know, I, you have an attachment to the pieces for, for different reasons, yeah. you know, so. So, but I don't know if I can pick a favorite one. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they mean, each one means something to me differently, so. What advice would you give to, like, somebody new trying to get into artist field? Um, I would say really sit down and think, you know, is this what I really want to do? Do I really love it? You know, because in order to be successful, you have to spend hours and hours practicing. Um, it takes a really long time. Uh, reference, use lots and lots of reference, look at other artists, talk to other artists, go to conventions, um, you know, find, find inspiration, you know, an artist that is living that you can talk to and, and ask him questions um, and just draw, practice life drawing, do studies, you know, do master studies, study, 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 hours and hours and hours and just don't give up. You know, if you love it and you're passionate about it and you keep working, you know, you'll get there eventually. It's going to take longer probably than you want, but, you know, it's if you put in the effort and the time, you know, it'll it'll happen, so. Now, do you go to a lot of conventions? This is the first year I've actually started doing shows. So okay. I'm, I'm a newbie. Uh, I've just started um, this next year. I'm planning on, you know, doing more. Um, I want to, like, upgrade my booth. I want to, you know, add more prints. I want to offer more selection of stuff. So I'm just kind of starting to figure out this whole con thing, yeah. So you'll be back here in June when they're back, or? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I am looking up. I'm in the process of figuring out what shows I'm doing. So, you know, but if I'm able to do it, you know, I probably would. You know, but it all it all depends on what other shows are going on, what conflicts there are. Uh, 
you know, how am I going to be able to get here and hotel and stuff like that. So there's a lot more to think about than just like, yeah, I totally want to do this show. <laughs> there's a whole lot of logistic reasons that can either stop you or help you do a show. So, you know, take all that into consideration when picking what shows to do. So if you have family that lives in the area, then sense. make it, that makes it so much easier. I mean, my first show was C2E2. I have a cousin that lives in Chicago and it means I only had to pay for airfare in the booth. Um, I have um, family, they have an exhibitor booth here, uh, Shadows on the Wall. They, I'm staying with them, I'm crashing with them. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> so uh, they, they're they kind of helping me make this possible because, awesome. you know, the booth, the hotel, the prints, the play mats, you know, That's the time, it it's, gets really expensive really fast. Yeah. And, you know, to make that all back is, yeah. you know, can be really daunting and scary yeah. at first. So, so, yeah, I'm definitely, you know, trying to pick what shows I do with caution because, you know, you gotta, gotta make money, unfortunately. Yeah. It's not all about having fun and right. talking to people, so. Yeah. Gotta get the dinero. Yes. yes. So do you, do you have a website and people can go and check uh, out? I have don't a have a website right oh, now. I no, I don't, I have, a, I have an online blog okay. that I post to. I have my personal, I have an artist Facebook page. I have a Tumblr, I have a DeviantArt, I have an art station, I have an Instagram. You know, I'm trying to be everywhere I can. The, the website is something that, you know, is kind of like next on my list on, you know, important business thing that I need to have. But um, right now, you know, if you Google, if you Google my name, you'll, you'll find me. You'll find me. I'm trying to be everywhere as much as I can because, you know, that's part of being an artist. You know, you finish a painting and then you spend five hours posting everywhere. So. Well, thanks for taking time to talk to us. Yeah, thanks for talking to me. Yeah, no, this is awesome. Thank you. Well, a song about never saying never and never being told what you can or cannot do. This is one of us. A one, two, three. fighting or when fighting got to me I looked to find examples on the field of chivalry and I saw mighty arms much stronger than my arms could ever be so I thought perhaps that field was not for me but still I stayed and watched the fighting till one figure stood apart in armor newly fashioned and a helm more pot than art but each blow was thrown with honor and the lightness of the heart so I took that step which soon became a start Cause she was not the biggest fighter Nor one to raise a fuss But I remember being proud that she was one of us And we might never stand together In a shield wall side by side Because of her I lift my sword with pride She was ladylike and lively, not the type you would expect With a braver heart than many and a slot shot to respect And I guess she'd once decided this was where she'd like to be And I thought if she could do it, why not me? Cause she was not the biggest fighter, nor one to raise a fuss